Um, but now talking about paradise a little bit, you know, the, the thing that personally fascinates me about paradise is just one thing. I mean, there's so many descriptions of Jannah in the Quran, right? There's rivers flowing and cups being offered. I used to wonder, why are cups being offered? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Allah says, وَأَكْوَابُ مَوْضُوعَ Cups that are placed. Like, what's the point of that? You ever throw a barbecue? You ever go to somebody's backyard and they're throwing a barbecue and they buy those cups from like Walmart and Costco and they're serving drinks or whatever, right? That's a little, you know, homely party. You have to go pour your own drinks. You ever go to an expensive restaurant, like a really elite restaurant, you gotta pay 50 bucks just to sit down? What, what do you see on the table before you even get there? Cups. This is 1400 years ago, Allah, know how we, Allah knows how we think. Allah says water flowing, rivers flowing. You ever been to the lobby of a very expensive restaurant, hotel? Mm. What do they have? You ever been to the CEO's office of a corporate executive, top floor in New York City? What do they have? Artificial waterfall. Same thing Allah described. You ever seen a commercial where they take you to go take a vacation in the Bahamas or take a vacation in, you know, Hawaii or something? Escape to paradise, it says. What do they show you? A palm tree, water, drinks. Relaxation. This is in the Quran, the verbatim word of God. This is. Well, these are the pictures they show you on TV commercials, right? Yeah. What is Allah describing? This is what. But what, this is what Allah is. The way Allah. This is Allah, Allah describing water flowing, trees, fruit, drinks, people reclining and relaxing, enjoying each other's company. And you're looking at that and going, "Wow, these guys made a commercial about escape to paradise," and. It's like they read the Qur'an and made that. Because Allah knows who He's talking to, He knows what we want. He knows what we want. Now look at this, I don't even care about what religion you are. Everyone as they get, especially men, and even women, as they get older and older, you know what, there's one thing in our head? We can't, it's programmed, we can't even get rid of it. It's the love of a beautiful house. You go through a nice neighborhood, what are you gonna do? Wow, that's nice. Yes. Look at that yard, oh my God. Oh my God, did you see that one? People can't help themselves. I don't care what religion, what background you're from. Everybody has desires to save up and have a stable place to live. They don't want to live on rent, they want to own a place. They want to have a nice house and they want it just the way they like it. What does Allah offer in paradise? <laughs> it's incredible. He says, I'll give you a house. And it'll have, what's the most expensive real estate in the world? Beachfront property. Manhattan is one of the most expensive cities in the world. What's the most expensive part of Manhattan? Anything that looks over to the water. Yes. And the higher up, the higher up, the more expensive. And Allah puts houses on top of mountains, mansions. They overlook the entire garden. They overlook the waterfall. These are things that Allah put inside our psyche. He wants us to desire these things in this world. So that when He talks about these much, the much superior version of that in the next world, that we're truly motivated. We say, if this mansion can exist here, oh my God, what does Allah have for me there? If this beautiful vacation spot, the oceans in California, the, the beaches in California, the canyons in Arizona, you know, the waterfalls in Arkansas. If that can exist here, what does Allah have for me in, in the Akhirah? What is he? What, what amazing thing is He gonna give me? You know, amazing, amazing. We, before we go to the question, just just tell us. So to get Jannah, to get Paradise, what are the simple things that we have? Is it something really that complicated? If you think about what are, what do we have to do to 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 achieve eternity, bliss, perpetual happiness? Does it ever get? Tired? Do you ever get tired? Bored in Jannah? No, you don't ever get bored in Jannah. That's one of the joys of Jannah. You have beautiful company in Jannah. You know, over in this world, when we take a vacation, especially we take a vacation with the family, kids might love it. It's a nightmare for parents, right? Because they take care of everything and this and that. When people get together for a break, like, you know, Christians get together for Christmas break, maybe families get together for Eid break or something. Fights break out, arguments happen. Things yeah. that, this is supposed to be a time of celebration. At the best celebrations. At the best celebrations, but when you're with others, and what happens? Arguments, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, God. This is, this is supposed to be a happy time. What happened here, you know? Um, people crying at weddings and things like that, right? Yeah. They hear Allah says in Jannah, one of the great joys of it, first of all, boredom's taken away. Second of all, you get whatever you want. Third of all, ghil, this ill feeling towards each other is eliminated. We're not even capable of it in Jannah. You can't even say something that hurts somebody else's feelings. No more Xanax. It's, it's, it's gone. gone. <laughs> it's gone. So you only have this beautiful relationship. You know how sometimes husband and wife get into arguments and they don't even know where it came from. Like they're both confused. Like how did we end up here? How did this conversation even start? Why did it get so nasty? That Allah will take that ability away from us in Jannah. We can only have wonderful conversation. I have something I'm looking forward to like it, peace, being at peace all the time. You know when, when people are happy, 
they're sitting there, man, I wish life could be like this all the time. And they know it's not going to be. They know around the corner, a problem's coming. Migraine's coming, My, something's coming. Something's <laughs> coming, whether it's physical, emotional, something's coming. Just to know that there's nothing problematic coming.